A quick new idea daily from the world's greatest TEDx talks. I'm your host, Atosa Leone, and this is TEDx Shorts. It's been over 40 years since its birth, and hip hop is a dominant cultural presence all around the world. Despite all its merits and contributions, many point to the prevalence of misogyny in lyrics in some of the genre's most popular songs. Ellen Chamberlain is a writer, radio personality, and broadcast journalist at Wayne State University. She's got suggestions on how we can shift hip-hop culture away from sexism and celebrate its artistry and inclusivity. Good evening, everyone. Let's talk about hip-hop. Uh, hip-hop is language, it's fashion, it's culture, and it was all born from the music. You see, hip-hop was born organically from the DJ spinning on the party scene at the discotheques back in the 70s. Now, if you don't know, the good mark of, of a really nice disco song is this nice little instrumental break in the middle of the record. You see, when that break hit, all the best dancers hit the dance floor. And what's a DJ's job if it's not to keep those booties boogieing on the dance floor? <laughs> so what the DJ did was the DJ said, you know, I want these people to dance. So he took that instrumental break and he looped it over and over and over again so that people could dance to the break. Anybody familiar with break dancing? Now you see that, that music, that beat, it begged for more than just some dope moves on the dance floor. You know, it needed a story. Lyrics needed to be added, and not necessarily the lyrics of the original song. Our stories, hip hop stories were birthed, and thus is the birth of the MC. Now, early forms of hip hop featured men as your DJs, your breakers, and your MCs. Women were there, we were present, we supported. Uh, in some cases, we were even stepping into rap battles ourselves. But it was MC Light who delivered the very first female solo hip hop album. That was back in 1988. Now, aficionados of the hip hop culture, now they would be disappointed if I did not mention lyrical contributions from a famous battle rapper named Roxanne Shante but it was MC Light who delivered the first commercial hip hop album from a woman. From that time, from 88 on into the 2000s, women flooded hip hop. Names like Moni Love and Soul and Pepper, Foxy Brown, Lil' Kim, these names were all synonymous with hip hop music. But at the same time, the lyrical content of our commercial male counterparts seemed to shift. You know, gone were the, the early days of the art form where boastful lyrics just dominated the landscape. You know, a new risque form of lyricism started to emerge. Now, don't get me wrong. Misogyny has been present in hip hop since the onset, likely because misogyny has been an ever present facet of American life. It's just a thing, it happens. So, you know, I had to ask myself, what was it that shifted from, you know, the mid 90s to the turn of the century that made the degradation of women morph from being the exception to the rule? You know, women have never taken anything lying down, all of us throughout history, and women specifically in hip hop have been no different. You know, when I considered what was it that really shifted in this hip hop culture and specifically in hip hop music, two things come to mind. First ownership, and then outlook. So in its infancy, uh, hip hop was underground, it was independent. You know, we were at the club, on the street, and maybe you might put together a mixtape and maybe it might get played. But the point was, was that the music was owned by the people who created it. Now, conversely, the radio stations, the, the urban radio stations that played this music were also owned by the people who inhabited those very communities that this music was affecting. Eventually, hip hop became a commodity. We lost ownership of the music. We lost ownership of radio stations. Ownership afforded us balance. 
And when we lost ownership in hip hop, the scales just shifted. Now let's consider Outlook. So the, the Outlook shifted naturally because of ownership. If the person who owns the music has no ties to the community that that music is affecting, why should they care what the content is? In fact, record companies seem to be investing in the most degrading and destructive lyricism that they can find. But sensationalism sells, right? And, and if that record company that's getting rich has no ties to the community that is breaking down as a result, who cares? Radio stations and TV stations, your music channels, you know, they program certain things. It's truly programming. If your community has programming that only tells you that you are a whore or worse, why should you think anything else of yourself? So what can you do to, to change hip hop culture? You know, we don't all necessarily live in the hood these days, although many of us still do. But media is everywhere now. Those days of only having access to music through the radio or your TV music channels, that's gone. You can get access to music everywhere from the palm of your hand to the back of your taxi cab. And word of mouth is still a thing. It still works. If you don't know what artists are popping or bopping, I think as the kids say now, just ask. Formerly Rap Genius, it's now just Genius.com, always features amazing lyrical content from all genres of music. You know, you can even go directly to the artists themselves and patronize them and purchase their music. You do not have to support the artists that tear down the community. So I've got a sample playlist for you here. It's on Spotify. It's real. You can look it up. It's called Hip Hop Is Not Dead. Here are some artists you can check out. J. Cole has been a favorite of mine for years. And he's not alone. Uh, there, there's Kendrick Lamar, uh, Chance the Rapper, Childish Gambino, who many of you might know as the rapper and uh, writer, actor, Donald Glover. And females in hip hop haven't gone anywhere. Femsies are here to stay. Uh, Rhapsody is probably the best lyricist in the hip hop game right now. You know, uh, don't let the name fool you, Doja Cat. <laughs> Doja Cat is an amazing lyricist and the things that she's bringing with metaphors and similes and sometimes those admirable, amazing and even abhorrent alliteration, true tools of the hip hop game are still alive. Even though it seems like it's a really big problem, the solution is so small. It's as simple as shifting your playlist. The TEDx talk you just listened to was recorded at a TEDx event in Detroit, Michigan. All TEDx events are independently organized by volunteers who believe in TED's mission of ideas worth spreading. Special thanks to the organizing team at TEDx Wayne State U. Want to listen to more TEDx Talks? Explore the entire archive on the TEDx YouTube channel. I'm Atosa Leone. Thanks for listening and see you tomorrow.